Hey everyone, welcome to Purling Through Life. My name's Melissa and I'm coming to you from the suburbs of Atlanta, Georgia. I hope everyone is doing well. If you're new here, welcome. And if you're returning, welcome back. So this is my channel and it's all about knitting and crochet and yarn. And today is a weekly update video and it is coming to you on a Tuesday again. So I'm thinking that Tuesday appears to be a better filming day for me. So going forward, we'll see what happens, but these just might be coming out on Tuesdays instead of Mondays. But at any rate, it is a weekly update video and I have three finished objects, five works in progress, and a yarn haul to share with you this week. So we'll get started with the finished objects. And the first two finished objects are the same pattern. They are both crocheted dish slash washcloths and they're by Creative Grandma and this was a YouTube tutorial, and it is called the Easy Crochet Cottage House Dishcloth. And here is the first one. Here it is. And can you see the, the stitches in it? So this uh, worked up very, very quickly. Um, so you chain 30, and I think there's like 26 rows. It is very, very quick and very easy and I think I think it's just a one row repeat after you get past the setup the cup the couple of setup rounds then it's just a row one row repeat so here's the first one and then here is the second one and both of these I did the same thing and I don't really know why and I did them like well two days two days apart but this one is much smaller, not much, but is a bit smaller than the pink one. I don't know. I guess your tension does change throughout the day. So here they are. They are both here. And these are both made with cotton, 100% uh, cotton. And it is the Premier Home Cotton. Here's the label. And this yarn, it's a medium four weight yarn and they are 96 yards 55 grams and i don't know if i said did i say these were 100 percent cotton they're not they're 85 percent cotton 15 percent polyester and here are the two what i have left the two colors this color is um let's see this color is flamingo splash and this one here is Ocean Splash. And I used a five millimeter crochet hook for these. So, and this is so easy, such an easy pattern and it works up so fast. And believe me when I tell you, I have a lot of cotton that I would love to work through. And I always start off pretty good doing washcloths and stuff like that. And then I, I don't know, and then I just, I don't know, it just, it just ends and I don't do as many washcloths as what I had planned on doing. So, um, this is another interesting fact. This yarn here is a lot softer than this. And I have a feeling it must be due to the dye, but this is so much softer. Maybe that's why it worked up differently because of the difference in the softness. I don't know. But anyway, it doesn't matter. I am glad these are done and I'll save these probably for Christmas presents or just hand them out to my kids. Whichever. So there are those two finished objects. And then my next finished object is my hitchhiker shawl. This is a knit shawl. It's a paid for pattern on Ravelry. And if you've been watching my channel, you've seen this many times and now it is finished. And here it is. And I have not blocked this. I don't really think it really needs a blocking, but before I give it away, I will wash it and block it. But I think it's pretty good so far. So it is finished. And let's, I used a 2.75. Yes, knitting needle for this. These are my high highs, my high high sharps, which I love. So let's see, it's an, it 
it's nice and long and I'm really happy with it. I love the color. I love this yarn. The yarn is by Miss Babs. Here's her label. And this is on the Tarte base. It's a fingering weight yarn, 75% superwash merino wool, 15% nylon, 10% tensile, and it is 500 yards and 122 grams. So these are, these tart yarns are big skeins of yarn, big hanks of yarn. And this is what I have left. So I have enough to put in my coziest memory blanket if I ever get around to working on that again. So I have enough to put that in the blanket and there it is it's done it's done so more than likely this will probably go to my mom she tends to collect a lot of my scarves and shawls and stuff like that I don't wear them too much I, you know in Georgia um but don't really it, you know it gets warm here so don't really have a need too much so that's that, and that is all of my finished objects. So now we will move on to works in progress. And the first works in progress I'll show you is another dishcloth slash washcloth. I prefer to use these, if I use them at all, as uh, washcloths. Actually, with the ones I just showed you, I'm not sure. That would probably be a better dishcloth because it's because of the texture, but at any rate. So here we go. So this is living in Hannah Lou Designs bag. And this is a knit washcloth. And it is from the um, the kitchen sink shop. And this is the April washcloth. If you sign up for the kitchen sink shop's newsletter, they um, she will send you a free knit um, a free knit pattern, washcloth pattern every month. And I have done uh, February, March, and now I've started April's, but I haven't done January's yet. And this one is called the Easter Cake Dishcloth. And this is what I have done so far. This is a really easy pattern. I am. This is just a two row repeat and you don't, once you get going, you don't have to look at the pattern at all. I love this pattern. I think this would look really, really good um, for a baby blanket. I love it. I love it. So there it is so far. And I'm using a 3.25 millimeter needle. My high, high sharps again. And the yarn I'm using, this yarn here. This is a Hobby Lobby yarn. It's the I Love This Cotton yarn, which is 100% cotton, and it's a number four weight. It is 100 grams, 180 yards, and the colorway for this is ivory. So, there is that. And I think that's everything. And I will link the down below the Kitchen Sink Shops newsletter. I'll link to that so you can sign up. I think, I'm not sure the time frame. Oh, I think someone, Jessica, told me. But eventually they do get released as free patterns on Ravelry. But I'm not sure the time frame for that. So past years, you can find them on Ravelry. Um, so, yeah. So I will link that down below for you if you're interested in the newsletter. And there is that, works in progress. And the next one, let's see, so this is another knit one. And this is a Cottontail Farms bag. And this is the Marina Shawl by Amba O'Brien. And I have not worked a ton on this, it's very, um, I mean, so I worked on it for a while, but yet there's not a ton of progress because you really have to, it's easy, but you have to really have to pay attention to what you're doing. So here we go. This is what I have so far. And where that stitch marker is, that's where I last showed it. So see, I did from about there to there. So I didn't work a ton on it, but you see all of the, um, the lace 
the simple lace work and stuff. Let me see, you can probably see it against my shirt a bit better. It's hard to show. So it's coming along. I thought I would be able to finish this section, but I didn't. And then the next section is just stripes. So you get a little bit of a break before you go back into more lace. Um, but yeah, I, I'm really, I do enjoy working on it, but you have to be, pay attention. There's so many yarn overs and stuff. And I'm actually, there's a chart, there's a written and there's a chart and I'm finding the chart a bit easier to follow than the, um, the written. Um, but I keep, I really do pay attention, honest, but I keep forgetting yarn overs. I keep forgetting them. So I'm actually, I found a very good YouTube video where it shows you how to fix some mistakes, like knit two togethers. It shows you how to fix that. I think it shows you how to fix yarn overs, a few things, um, increases. A few, I think it's got four increases where it shows you how to fix them. And I'll link that down below because that's been a, a lifesaver instead of tinking back. Um, fixing yarn overs, I knew how to do that, but I missed a few knit two togethers. I really am trying to pay attention. Um, and that video saved me from having to tank it all the way back. Because with knit two togethers, I guess you can just increase, but sometimes you can't just say, you say, oh, I missed, not not a knit two together. I'm, I'm sorry, a knit front and back. That's what I messed up on a few times. Um, a knit front and back. And you'd say, well, you could increase on the next row, but it doesn't always, that's not the, always the case. You can't really. So that video shows you how to fix that, shows you how to fix yarn overs, make ones. I think it's got four, but I will link that down below. And if you're a knitter, I would save that. It's a lifesaver. So there is my shawl so far. And I told you the needles. And this is a two color shawl. And these are the two colors that I'm using. And this one here is by Passion Yarns. This is their label. And this is called Mochaccino. That's the colorway. And it's a fingering weight yarn. 75% superwash merino, 25% nylon, 463 yards, 100 grams. So I'm using that color. And then this next color here is another fingering weight yarn. And it's by Leading Men Fiber Arts. And here's their label. And this is on their Showstopper colorway. And the color weight is Gothic Queen, 463 yards, 100 grams. And it is also a 75-25. So there are the two colors that I'm using. And that is that. Works in progress. I think that's it. And they, this is a paid-for pattern on Ravelry. The Hitchhiker is also a paid-for pattern. And the next... Let's see. Well, let's go ahead. I have one more knitting and then I have two crochets. So I'll go ahead and show you the knitting. This is just, this is boring. This is just a sock. I've shown a million times, but I have made some progress. So here's the bag. And this is the Twisted Yarn and Fiber bag. Beautiful. And here's the sock. So I have, it's just a vanilla sock. And I have the first sock off the needles and I will eventually put in an afterthought heel right there. So there's that sock. You've seen it a bunch. And this is what I have done on the second sock. So there we go. Yep, there it is. I, ha I did not put the marker in for the heel, but I will. So how I knit my socks, I knit them mainly on Magic Loop. Every now and then I'll use DPNs and I use my high high sharps 2.25 millimeter and I knit them cuff down. I cast on 64 stitches, two by two ribbing for 15 rounds. And I like a shorty sock. So I have 20 rows before I start the actual foot. So it's really just an ankle, just around my ankles. And then I'd like to do an afterthought heel. So there we go. There is the socks so far. 
and I'm just not in a sock mood. I just haven't been in a sock mood. Um, yeah, that's okay. So this is the yarn, and it's a fingering weight yarn, and it is by West Yorkshire Spinners Signature Four Ply, Signature Sparkle Four Ply, and there's the label, and this is the colorway Silent Night, and can you see some of the sparkle? Yep. And let's see, it's 437 yards, 100 grams. So there we go. So this is a lot of yarn. I have I will have enough to make two pairs of socks. One of my daughters really wants these socks. So that's keeping me motivated to work on them because I'm really just not in the mood to knit socks. That's okay. I This has happened before. And it will come back where I want to knit socks. It could be because maybe I'm a bit the color. Uh, I usually like to do self-striping yarn. And that gives you a little bit of interest because when the yarn changes to different stripes. So that is that works in progress. And those are my three knitting works in progress. And the last two are crocheted. And um, hang on one second, I wanna get a ball of yarn to show you. So my next works in progress is a crocheted shawl and it is living in this bag by Matter Root. And this crochet shawl is called the Reading Shawl and this is by Ophelia Talks, which is a YouTube tutorial. And I have the first cake of yarn done. Well, most of the first cake because I made this shawl previously with a smaller hook and I didn't like what it looked. I didn't like the tension of the shawl. So I ripped it out, frogged it all back and started over with a bigger hook. And in the process of frogging it, I really wasn't able to frog the whole shawl because the yarn likes to stick together. It's not an easy yarn to frog. So I frogged most of it, but I had a bit that I wasn't able to frog. So I just had to cut that off and throw it away. So this is most of it, one cake of the yarn so far. And here it is, the progress on it. So it's getting large. So here we go. Here's the shawl so far. And I hope I'm showing this okay because I can't really see. I can't really see. I love the colors of this. And let's see. So this is where I was last time. So that's all of what I've done from there down. So Yep, that's what I've done. So actually, it's, it should be up here. It, the hook is actually up here. So from that purple line, or the maroon line down, that's what I've done. And this is the yarn that I'm using. This is why I wanted to go get the yarn, because I have to start a new cake of yarn. And here it is. This is what I'm using. These beautiful colors. I love this yarn. So this is... I bought it Michael's and it is a Karen Macchiato cake in the colorway Boundless. It's a number five bulky yarn and it is 80% acrylic, 20% wool, 227 grams and 481 yards. Look at those colors. So I will be starting this cake and we'll see. I'm hoping two cakes will make it large enough, but I do have... I bought a total of four of these. So I have three more of these left. Um, I'm hoping after two, it'll be big enough. But if not, I have plenty. So there it is. And I'm using a seven millimeter crochet hook. And I believe this crochet hook is a Knit Pro crochet hook. It's the only metal seven millimeter hook I could find. I don't like plastic hooks. I don't, uh, it doesn't work well for me. So I bought two of these because I could, I really couldn't find any others. So there is that works in progress. I'm loving this so much.
I think it's a great shape too. It's gonna be really nice to drape over and I may keep this one for myself. You know, I know it's summer, but sometimes you might have a cold night. We like to sit outside in the summer. We have a big porch, so we like to sit outside. So this might come in handy. Or maybe not if it's like last summer where it was so hot for so long. Maybe not. So I have one more works in progress to share with you, and it is a crocheted amigurumi. And this is Ray the Elephant. And Ray is not living in this bag anymore because he's too big, but the pattern is, and the crochet hooks and yarn labels in that. So this is Ray the Elephant. And this comes out of this book, Dress Up Amigurumi. But it is also, um, you can find some of these patterns on Ravelry. So I will also link the pattern to Ray the Elephant. I'll link that down below. That if you just want that, you can go and find that on Ravelry. So this is Ray so far. And he needs a bit of adjusting. Like, I need to probably fix his eyes, but that's okay. I stuffed his head a bit so you could get an idea of what his head will look like. Now his eyes look off to me, but they are on the same line. And I don't know if that's to do with stuffing or what, but here is Ray, there's his little belly button. And I need to curl his trunk and sew that, but I haven't done that yet because I'm lazy. But here he is, here's his backside. So the stuffing, I just did that so you could get an idea also, so I could get an idea because his eyes, they look off. I like how, where they are, the height, but see, they look like this size should be a bit higher. So I have to work with that. I have to adjust that. But there he is. He's so cute. Um, so I'm going to um, finish Ray. Um, I don't know if Ray is a boy or a girl, um, but... Um, I'll let my granddaughter decide that we'll go through the um, book and pick out an outfit because there's lots of outfits that go with all of the um, characters. There are four characters that you can knit and you can knit them with a shirt with or without, but there are the four. And then like on the front, they have all kinds of different outfits that you can make. So I opted not to give Ray a t-shirt um, because, you know, there's, well, I did make one before I made the bear and I gave him a t-shirt, but I thought, well, I'll just make Ray like this and then we'll just, uh, crochet some clothes for him. He's so cute. I love him. And I am, what crochet hook am I using? I'm using a very small crochet hook. Considering this is a worsted weight yarn. I'm using a 3.25 tulip, and tulips are my favorite hooks. Clovers come in very close. Um, but I am using, the yarn I'm using is the Pima Suprema, and it is a Hobby Lobby Yarn B yarn that I got on one of their clearance sales. And this is the second skein that I'm using. And this colorway is Bone, and it is a number four medium, 100 grams, 180 yards, and it's 100% Pima cotton. And I'm using a really small hook, which is kind of hurting my hands, but I, especially for me, because I am a tight crocheter, but I just really uh, want, um, I'm finding it's really helping make it easier for me to stuff because there's just a bit more structure because it's such, the stitches are so tight. So there he is, he'll look better when you curl his trunk and then just sew that on. And it was cool that the trunk, if you can notice, you don't sew that on, you make the trunk and then you, um, when you're crocheting, you just crochet it on. So there is Ray the Elephant and I'm really happy with him. And he's very, 
he's getting there. So I have to finish his head, obviously. And then I have the ears. He has tusks and arms. And then he'll be done. He'll be ready for um, an outfit. Yep, so there we go. So that is all of my finished objects. And I do have a yarn haul, a little bit of a yarn haul to share with you. Some Hobby Lobby yarn and some Joann's yarn. Joann's had a fantastic sale, so I took advantage. But I'm going to pause you now, and I'm going to clear this off and get the yarn and show you what I got. I'll be right back. So all of this yarn was purchased over two weeks ago, so I'm not sure about the sale prices as of today, other than the Hobby Lobby yarn, which I bought during a 30% off sale week, and they do that sale every other week. But the Joann's yarn, I'm not sure if that is on sale anymore. But I'll go ahead and I'll show you what I got, and I'll start with Hobby Lobby. So all I bought at Hobby Lobby was cotton yarn, and I know I just said that I need to work through my cotton and that's why I can never work through my cotton because I keep buying more. But at any rate, let me show you what I got. And the first thing I got is this yarn here. And this is, I love this cotton. And I got two skeins of this. And this is in the colorway white and it's a number four weight yarn. It's 100% cotton, 100 grams for 180 yards. And I got this for Ray the Elephant to do his tusks. I didn't need two skeins, but I thought you can always use white yarn, so I bought two. In fact, all of these yarns from Hobby Lobby, I bought two of each. So there's the first one. And then the next four yarns that I got, they are all the Crafter's Secret yarn, and the cotton, Crafter's Secret cotton, which is nowhere near as soft as this, but it is a good, um, you know, like kitchen cotton, and they have really lovely colors, I feel. So here is the Crafter's Secret label, and I got two of each of these, and here is the first colorway. This colorway is Rose Quartz. It's 100% cotton. It is 71 grams, 120 yards. It's a number four weight. So there's that one. And to go with this, I got this one. So I think everything is the same. Yes, everything is the same, except for this colorway is hot pink. So I thought these two would go really well together. So those two go together. And then I got this one, two of this one. And this one is called Citrine Sheen. And then to go with this one, I got this one here. And this one is called Ivory. So these are the four yarns I got from Crafter's Secret. And this was all 30% off. So these are uh, normally $2.99. And they were a 209. And then this is 399. And for 30% off, and this was so that made this 279. So that's what I got at Hobby Lobby. It's so sad. Hobby Lobby really didn't have any new yarn. It's been so long since I went in there. I thought, well, I'll go see if they have anything new. And they had nothing new. Um, and I probably haven't been in there to shop for yarn in close to, well, it's been, well, it could be close to nine months since they did their clearance, which that even might be longer than nine months, but they have no new yarn. It's so sad. They have hardly any yarn compared to what they used to have. But that's my uh, Hobby Lobby haul. So now we'll move on to Joann's. And this yarn here, um was really discounted. So the first one I will show you is the Fleck yarn, the Big Twist Fleck. And I got four skeins of that. I hope you can see it good. It's got very um, light flecks, but they're all different colors, yellow, blue, pinks. So I got four of these, it's so soft. And this is a Big Twist yarn. 
and it's 208 yards, 100 grams. It's a number four weight. It's 85 acrylic, 10% polyamide, 5% linen, and this is called fruit salad. So I got four of these. Oh, they're so soft. And this was regularly $6.99, and it was on sale for $2.79. That's a really good sale price. And there's the label. So I got four of these. And then I got four of these. It's another big twist yarn. It's their big twist party yarn. And this um, is, let's see, 240 yards, 100 grams. And compare it to this one. So there's a little bit more in this one. It's a number four weight. And this is 100% acrylic. And the colorway is prism. And I don't know, did I say I got four of these as well? And let's see, this was, this was $2.79 as well, regular, regularly $6.99, and this was on sale for $2.79. So that's like a $4 savings. So I got four of those, and then I got four of these as well. And this is the Big Twist Carousel. And I know that these are not new yarns to anybody that really was trying not to buy yarns, but these are their newest yarns that um, I didn't get when they first came out. Big Twist Carousel, and I got four of these. And these, these were different. They were normally $6.99, and it says, I think you bought three and got one free. But anyway, it marked it down to five twenty four a skein, so they were dollar seventy five off each skein. So there's that, and I got four of these. Sorry if I'm repeating myself. The colorway is cloudy sky, one hundred and seventy yards, one hundred grams, a number four medium, and yep, one hundred percent acrylic. I think that's everything. So I got four of these, and. This seems a bit thicker than a four. Did it really say it was a four? It did. Mm, I think it's almost a five in my opinion, especially compared to these. And they say these are a four as well. But it's it's beautiful. I love those colors. And then the last yarn I got, and I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know why. But here we go. I got this. This is the Karen Colorama Halo yarn. It's very similar to the latte cakes, which I have some latte cakes. I've never used them. So, mm. but it's so pretty. And this one was $11.99 and on sale for $7.99. Let's see, this colorway is Blue Stone Frost. It's a number five bulky, 71% acrylic, 18% nylon, 11% polyester. And this is a 227 gram cake for 481 yards. And I got two of these. So, yes. So, yeah, I did not do so well not buying yarn but at least it was all on sale and i'm gonna be purchasing some more yarn soon so not next yeah next week well i'll film next week but the end of next week we are going to connecticut i'm originally from connecticut and we are going to connecticut my husband and i to visit family and i plan on doing a little bit of yarn shopping there because they have where i live in georgia there are I am very lucky. I live very close to a very big LYS, Eat, Sleep, Knit. And really, that's all you need because they carry everything. But other than that, there's none. The next one is an hour from me. 
So local yarn stores are few and far between here in Georgia, it seems like, at least in my area. But in Connecticut, they're everywhere. So I think we are going to go to a couple. One of them I'd like to go to is Knit New Haven. So I will be buying a bit of yarn there. And then shortly after we get back, there will be, and I'm not going to say this right, the Georgia the, I will I will put it down right here, but it is the Georgia Mountain Needle Arts Festival. Maybe I got that right, but I'll put it down here. And that is the weekend of the 26th, and we'll be getting back just then. So I will be going to that. It's a very small, very quaint. I just love, it's an adorable little yarn festival in the Georgia Mountains. So I will be going to that, and I will be purchasing yarn. So... Um, my yarn diet, yarn, it's not really a yarn ban, is going to be, uh, not, I won't be doing very well this month at all. That's okay. Um, but I have been good this year so far. And all this yarn was on sale. And then the other yarns, when I go to Connecticut, I probably won't purchase that much because I will be going to the yarn festival shortly after I get back. But when I go to that yarn festival... I will probably be purchasing a bit of yarn. I probably will be, but that's okay. That's that's part of the hobby or that's a hobby in and of itself, yarn, buying yarn. So I'm really excited and looking forward to that. And I get to see people that I really only get to see once or twice a year. So that'll be fun too. So yeah, so I don't think it's gonna interrupt any of my filming schedule. Maybe one week it will. Actually, the week of the 26th, because I think the 26th is a Friday. So I think that week uh, I will still be in Connecticut on Monday and Tuesday. Yeah, so that week we'll have to see. Well, I'll talk more about that next week um, if I will not be filming the week after or not. But um, when I do come back after that, I have a lot to show you. So anyway, I'm rambling now, which always happens. But I hope everyone has had a wonderful um weekend and that your week is going well yesterday was a solar eclipse we had about they said 80 to 85 um um percent coverage so in 2017 we had i think nearly full coverage so it didn't get as dark as then but it was really fun to watch it was a very clear sky out so we did get to see every we did get a good view of it um, of course, not really like you don't look directly at it, but we did get a good view of it and it got eerily dark. The shadows were strange. Um, my grandson was very disappointed because he thought it, it was going to go completely dark. I tried to explain to him that even during the full coverage, it's not like, well, I've never experienced full coverage that I can remember. Not in my adult life, but the one in 2017, I think we had like 96% coverage and it's, it wasn't like pitch black or anything. So I was trying to explain that to him. Um, but it was still, it was really cool and it was a beautiful day. So if any of you got to see the solar eclipse, um, please uh, leave it down below and let me know how much you got to see, if it was what the coverage was and if it was a good day to see it. It was a perfect day yesterday to see it for us. So that's all. Um, I am definitely rambling now, but that's all I have to show you this week. Again, if you made it this far, thank you so much. I very much appreciate it. It really helps when people watch the entire video. I understand when you can't watch the whole video, but it does really help when you do watch the whole video. And it also helps if you give a thumbs up. And if you did like the content, I wouldn't mind if you subscribed. That would be great. I'd really much appreciate it. So again, that's all I have to show you this week, and I hope the rest of your week goes well, and I will see you next week. So until then, bye for now.